yeah, so this part, we're gonna be talking about the code. Um, so you're looking at the GitHub repository. Um, it is well maintained. We are continuously making improvements to this. So, and it contains all the, the model that we talked about in the first talk that I gave. There's a readme that you can follow to run the code and so forth. So for this uh, workshop, um, there is, if you go to the workshop folder, there is a demo notebook and the readme file. So I'll just go through the readme file um, in the beginning. So all you need to run this code is you need to have a terminal, which is by default available in all systems, Git and Miniconda. I guess Miniconda is the only thing that you need to install. And these instructions were sent prior um, to the workshop. So uh, you can follow these to install SSRS uh, and um, run the demo notebook that's in the workshop folder that we'll be going through um, next. Um, one thing I would note is, as Carolina mentioned, uh, John mentioned that uh, to use NREL's Win Toolkit, we need to get an API key. Um, so I've, I have the instructions there um, if you need to get the API key um, and um, put it in a file um, so that we can automatically extract data from Win Toolkit. Um, yeah, so um, let's get uh, started with the, the code itself. So this is the demo notebook. Uh, the IEPYNB file is what you want to run, and you can you can run it with me or or do it at, at later time. But it should run following the instructions in the README file that's in the same folder. Um, okay, so let's start. So this is the this is the notebook. Before I start, I, I just want to mention a few things that I've may not have mentioned in, in my talk is this tool is very easy to use. One of one of our goals was to make it um, accessible to the general public so they can run it without any hassle. And it only uses data that's publicly available. So NREL's Win Toolkit, USGS, Wind Turbine Database, and, and the 3DP elevation map. Um, there are some limitations that I mentioned earlier. It simulates only horizontal movements, does not explicitly consider flight modes such as flapping, stooping, and low altitude thermal soaring, which might be important uh, for capturing the uh, risk of turbine collision. It does not distinguish between resident and migratory eagles, um, and it does not account for turbine avoidance. So those turbine locations that I show is just for visualizing where the presence would be. It's not interacting with the model in any way. Um, okay, so I'll, once you have installed SSRS, you need to load from SSRS simulator and config. So config is the class that will determine your parameters of the model. And simulator is the class that will actually simulate tracks and presence and all that stuff. Uh, once we have loaded the simulator and config classes from SSRS, all you need to do is from SSRS import simulator and config. Um, and make sure you are in the environment. So um, Conda environment that you have installed following the readme. So you can change your um, Conda environment here. Make sure it's the one that uh, you installed using the readme file. Um, then you can print the configuration parameter. So I'll just go over this one by one. Um, so first you need to set up the run name. So this name will determine where your figures and data get stored in this directory. Um, maximum cores. So this uh, is parallel code. Uh, it's similar as Eagles in parallel. So you can specify that here, how many cores you want to use. Uh, the seed determines uh, if it's less than zero, it will generate random tracks every time. But if you wanna fix it and generate the same realization of tracks for a publication or presentation, you can set it to any value greater than zero. And the mode is probably the most important parameter. So there's three modes 
uniform mode, snapshot mode, and seasonal mode. I'll go over these uh, in the later part, but this is probably the most important parameter that determines which mode you're running the code in. Um, so first we have the terrain settings. So you specify the south western location of your region from this point. So what I do usually, I go to the USGS wind turbine database. Um, you can just Google USWTDB and it, it will get you here. So this is basically an up-to-date uh, data on turbines in the US. So you could go to any location. For example, if I wanna focus on Wyoming, top of the world, you can go here and you can get your cursor here and you see lat long being printed here. So you can just copy these and um, copy these into, into this parameter and run your code at that location. Uh, projected coordinate reference system. So this is, as I mentioned, North America, Albers, equally iconic projection, but you can run this code in any of the other projections. Um, then you specify the region width. So 60 kilometer by 50 kilometer here, but you can specify anything you want here. The resolution is uniform in both directions, X and Y. So here I'm using 100 meters, but you can, you can go until 10 meters because the terrain information from USGS 3D uh, EP product is at 10 meter resolution. Um, so you can go up to that. Um, so uniform mode is a mode where you specify the wind speed and direction manually. So here I'm saying, okay, 10 meters per second, westerly wind. So this will not then go into uh, go extract data from NREL's wind toolkit data set. This will be specified by the user. So let's say if, if, if there's a location where you don't have data set, you just want to, but you have information about the wind speed and directions of that location, you can specify it manually. In the snapshot mode, we focus on a particular time. Um, so here I'm focusing on 1 p.m. 17th of June, 2010. So it will go out, pick this, pick the wind condition at that hour from NREL's wind toolkit and run the model. So right now, NREL's wind toolkit that's available um, is um, 2007 to 2014, but um, as Carlina mentioned, the new products are, are gonna be um, there as well. So uh, you can run it for, for whatever time uh, is, allow, um, is allowed um, in the wind toolkit. Then there's seasonal mode. So in seasonal mode, you focus on a range of time. So here I'm saying, I wanna focus on 20th of March to 15th uh, of May. And I wanna focus on daytime. So this is basically when you're trying to uh, predict presence seasonally. So I'm gonna focus on, let's say springtime here, the springtime may be different for different regions. So you can put that here. And then you can focus on morning, afternoon, evening, or daytime. Um, and then you can say, okay, randomly select eight times within this time range and run the model and get me the average presence. So that presence will actually take care of uncertainties and variations in atmospheric conditions during this time range. So again, manually specified, uniform mode, you're focusing on particular time instant. In the past, snapshot mode, you're focusing on a range of time, um, uh, range of months or days, uh, you can get to seasonal mode. Uh, for the snapshot and seasonal mode, you need to get data from wind toolkit. So there's AWS. Uh, you can specify what height you want to extract the data. Um, and well, wind, tool wind toolkit has data at, at finite uh, heights, a finite number of um, heights above ground level. So you can specify that and it will actually go out and pick the closest one. And you can specify it for thermal updrafts as well. Um, and the interpolation. So the NREL's wind toolkit is at two kilometer resolution, whereas this domain will be at 100 meter resolution. So you need some interpolation technique. You can say linear or cubic here. Um, then you need to specify. So this is a capability um, that's coming. It's not there yet, where you could specify how many thermal updrafts realizations you want to simulate. So you can pretty much ignore this at this point. Um, that, and this is the threshold parameter. So this is the parameter that, that is related to Golden Eagle. So we know Golden Eagles uh, tend to use updrafts um, that are greater than 0.75 or somewhere around that uh, meters per second. Um, they will prefer to use uh, only the updrafts that are more than that, not less than that. So we can set this parameter to an individual bird or species and 
That way, the model will only rely on updrafts that are larger than this value. So if you want to run this code on a different species that are um, that can use updrafts greater than 0.5 meters per second, you can change this and simulate it. And then this part is on how we simulate the track. So we have a fluid flow model, model right now, but as Dave mentioned, we're gonna be adding heuristics uh, approach and the Bayesian data informed model in there as well in future. But right now it's just a fluid flow approach of uh, minimizing energy expenditure. Uh, this is the direction. So which direction are our golden eagles trying to go? Um, so zero is north, um, 45 is, is north uh, east. So clockwise measured from the north. How many simulated eagles you wanna um, simulate? So here I'm saying thousand, you can specify as much as you want. Normally I've seen that thousand, if you use thousand, uh, your presence doesn't make, uh, change much from one uh, realization to another. Um, there's little sampling variability after thousand. Then you can specify the start region. So the rectangular region from where you want to simulate the eagles. So this is the min max in x direction and then min max in y direction. Uh, then you can specify how you wanna simulate uh, Eagle's uh, starting location within this, this rectangular region. So you can say randomly, so you give it a box and then it, it will randomly select the points where it will start the Eagles. Or you can say um, structured where it will just uniformly space them out. Um, these two parameters are related to the stochasticity. So first parameter basically is the scaling parameter for probabilities. So uh, one means it will, it will not scale the probabilities. Um, if you put it higher, then that means eagles are more likely to make the best decision from, for themselves. So you'll see tracks not having randomness in this. If, if you make it higher, you'll probably see if, the go, if, the, if an eagle is started from the same point, two eagles, they will probably follow the same route. Um, but I think keeping it one um, makes it much more realistic. And then there's the direction restrict parameter. This is the memory parameter. So how many previous steps you want to account for when you're deciding about the next step? So one means uh, eagle, uh, the simulated, um, for the next move, it will look into the previous move and decide where it wants to go and make sure it's the simulated eagle are not making sharp turns basically so more uh, if you assign it let's say five or six eagles will more likely to stay um, it will not change its direction much so you can play around with that as well uh, and the rest of them are just plotting uh, parameters so let's start with our test one so we're going into wyoming region 100 meter resolution uniform mode. That means I'm going to specify the wind speed and direction. And I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to simulate um, golden eagles uh, starting randomly from southern boundary traveling north. And I'm going to simulate 500 tracks. So first I load the data class replace utility. So this is the utility we're going to be using to generate configurations from previous configurations. So, so this is where I take in the default config that's there and I change these parameters for my test. So first I say, okay, my run name is Wyoming underscore test. I'm gonna fix the seed so that I get the same results every time. This is the Southwestern point of that region. I'm gonna simulate 60 by 50 kilometer, 100 meter resolution, uniform mode, 10 meters per second, uh, westerly wind, eagles traveling north, 500 uh, simulated paths. This is the start region and the threshold. So once I set this, I can print this. So you'll see that you have changed these parameters, uh, check it, um, everything makes sense. Then we initiate the simulator. So it will specify, okay, this is your run name. This is your random seed. Your terrain resolution is hundred meters. Your grid size is 500 by 600. Um, now, I, since I've already ran this code before it found the data from USGS 3DP. If you're running it for the first time, you'd probably, it will probably take a little bit of time to get that data downloaded. But once it downloads, that will not download again. It will just reread that. Um, so wind speed is 10 meters per second, wind direction is 270 degrees. Uh, once the simulator has been initiated, we can plot the terrain here. 
Um, so this is the terrain, the 60 by 50 kilometer terrain. And you can see the wind turbine locations uh, within that terrain. And this, this here is the top of the world terrain. Uh, we can also print the turbine details. So for this region, there are nine projects, 415 turbines. You can see the year the turbines were put there, uh, became operational, their hub height and rotor diameters. You can see the new ones have uh, higher hub heights and rotor diameters. Um, so you get the turbine details, then we can plot the updrafts. So this updraft is without the threshold parameter applied. So you can put this flag here uh, if you want to show the updrafts. Now, since they were westerly winds, you can see the yellow regions on the westerly slopes. So that means the orographic updrafts are more likely to be on the western slopes. Um, after applying the threshold, so this is a threshold function. So what this is, is it will go out and be applied to each point in this region. For updrafts less than 0.75, it will scale them down because these golden eagles are probably not gonna use them for, uh, for moving. And anything above 0.75 remains the same. So this makes sure that, that uh, while the golden eagles are traveling, they're only able to use uh, usable updrafts. Uh, uh, after applying this threshold, we can plot the, plot the updrafts. You can see that these are, there are more yellow regions here than, than here. It's because anything less than 0.75 has been degraded down. Um, once we have the updrafts, we can then simulate tracks. So it's gonna say movement model is fluid flow. Updraft is set at 0.75, movement direction is zero. And then it will go out and solve that differential equation that I showed that uh, implements the minimization of energy. Now, since I've already solved that before, it just read the same file, but for you, it might take a little bit of time to solve that linear system. Um, and then it simulates 500 tracks. And then I can just say, okay, plot tracks. Um, and these are 500 tracks starting from the southern boundary. You can see the random locations of the starting points. That's because of the random flag that I used in my parameters. And so it simulated 500 tracks going north. Once I have these tracks, I can then plot the presence map. So presence map is basically a smoothened version of, of the counts uh, of the number of eagles that were found uh, traveling at certain point. So this is presence map by applying a, a circular kernel. Um, gives you an idea that, that for this wind speed and, and direction, if the birds are approaching from south, traveling towards north, they're more likely to take, go through Campbell Hill when power plant than the top of the world. Um, if provided they're using orographic updrafts to travel. Um, if you want to focus on Campbell Hill and see which turbines may be uh, in, uh, in conflict, you can first print the project names of the uh, wind power plants, and then you can copy this sort of and then use this plot wind plant presence map function and put the name of the power plant. And then that will plot the turbine scale presence. So now you can see each turbine, how, how the presence looks for each turbine. You can probably see that north eastern turbines of Campbell Hill are probably in, in conflict with the likely routes that a golden eagle might take while using our graphic updrafts. You can also look at the top of the world. And um, since we didn't see any uh, presence there, it's, it's all white. That means there's likely not uh, no um, conflict there. So that way you can focus more on more uh, your resources and uh, in, in trying to make sure that, uh, so as the Golden Eagle approaches, you can keep updating these presence maps basically. And that will tell you which turbines are more likely to be in danger. Um, Next, I'm gonna use the same settings as previously, but I'm just gonna change where the eagles are starting to enter this domain and where they're moving and also the wind speed and direction. So eight meters per second easterly wind. So all we need to do here is take the initial configuration, put it in the replace utility and just change the parameters that you want it changed. So I'm changing wind speed from 10 to eight so I specified that I'm changing wind direction from 270 to 90, so from westerly to easterly, and I'm changing the direction. The birds are trying to move, so minus 45 means northwesterly, um, since the angle is measured clockwise from north. 
and the start region is, is the south uh, eastern edge. So I run this. I can then check whether my parameters have been updated. It has been updated here. I can check that. Um, then I initiate a simulator. Again, it won't download the data. It just uses the existing um, data. Uh, it computes the updrafts. I can then plot the updrafts. And now you see the updrafts are different from previously because it's easterly and not westerly winds anymore. So you have different updrafts. And this is after applying thresholds. So you can turn this flag off and on if you want to look at uh, before threshold and after threshold. Um, then you can simulate tracks. Um, so it, it will take a few minutes if, if you're running at high resolution, let's say 10 meters. But for 100 meters, it, it, uh, it just takes 10, 15 seconds. Um, so this is now simulating tracks um, going north, uh, northwesterly. So let's plot them. Okay, so this is how it looks. So remember that box. Uh, so in my in my setting, I said, I said uh, fifty five to sixty. So from fifty five kilometer to sixty kilometer in x direction, and zero to five kilometers in y direction. So that's the south uh, easterly edge of this region. So you can see it's randomly starts uh, the tracks, and this is what the five hundred tracks look like. Now you can see it's 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 trying to follow a, a certain street here, and if you look at the presence map, it will look um, like there may not be any conflict with any turbines. So that's the point here is that it's not actually your wind conditions; it's also where the eagle is starting and where it's trying to go. That also matters. Um, so you can see here that there's probably no conflict between Campbell Hole power plant and top of the hill. So you can see just white region. So there's no presence there and no presence there. Um, yeah. So um, moving on to a different region. So what I usually do is I go to the, um, the US WTDB and I go to a region that I, where I want to focus on. So for example, Altamont Ultima Pass is here. I just put my cursor on the southwestern edge, get the lat long that is shown there, and then um, put those lat longs in the, in, the, um, in the southwest underscore long left parameter of the model. Um, and I am looking at 40 by 40 kilometer region and I want to run the snapshot mode. So I want to now focus on a particular time in the past. So 10 a.m. on 29th of March, 2012. And I wanna uh, simulate uh, eagles that are uh, traveling south, 500 of them uh, from, the, uh, uh, from the Northern boundary. So I can, Initiate this. So you, you see how I'm using the previous configurations and I'm only changing the parameters that I need changing. Um, so that way you can keep re reusing your previous configurations that, you're, uh, that you just want to change a few parameters on. And then you can print it. So if you just say print that configuration, it will print all the parameters and you can check whether you have made the right, um, whether the configuration parameters have changed or not. Then you can simulate. Um, now again, uh, you're seeing found re save raster data. This will take time for you if you're running it for the first time, but it won't take, take like uh, half an hour. It will just take like four or five minutes or something like that. Um, and now it went to the wind toolkit on Amazon Web Services and it extracted these four parameters. So wind speed at 100 meters, pressure at 100 meters, wind direction at 100 meters and temperature at 100 meters. Um, and once it downloads these entities, then it will compute the orographic updrafts using these wind speed and direction that came from wind toolkit. Um, so once it has downloaded the wind toolkit data, computed the updrafts. Um, so first let's look at the terrain. So this is the terrain uh, at Altamont Pass. So you'll see that uh, this region where Altamont Pass uh, is, you see a lot of turbines there and this because it's probably, uh, ground elevation is higher from, from, from um, regions to the west and east of it. Um, and that's what you see here sort of um, happening. 
So this is the region, 40 by 40 kilometer, uh, 100 meter resolution. Let's look at the turbine uh, in this area. So this code as SRS goes out to um, the US wind turbine database and fetch the most recent turbine location. So if there are turbines here that went uh, out of service or they were new added, it will take care of that as it is updated in there. So there's 194 turbines in there. Uh, you can see we, we have turbines as old as 2004, and then there's uh, turbines that were as recent as 2021 with a height of 90 meters and lower diameters of 116 uh, meters. Um, then you can plot the wind toolkit layers. Now, uh, this will probably take a little bit of time, but um, you can see what the data you got from wind toolkit um, interpolated down to the, the, the terrain we have here which is 100 meter resolution. So it will use linear interpolation technique and convert that two kilometer by two kilometer resolution data to 100 meter. So this is wind speed at 100 meters. Um, this is pressure at 100 meters. This is wind direction at 100 meters, uh, 100 meters above ground level. And then this is the temperature. So temperature and pressure are needed to compute thermals, whereas wind speed and wind direction are used in computing orographic updrafts. We can then plot the updrafts. So this is what the orographic updrafts look like now. Since um, this is where the ridge line is, you probably see most of the uh, updrafts on this on this uh, area here. Uh, we can then simulate tracks. Um, again, this this line here is because I've already run this for the, for the sake of time. But if you're running it the first time, you'll probably see uh, uh, addition of uh, two, three minutes of computational time because it's solving a linear system here um, that's created by the discretization of that differential equation that minimizes energy expenditure. Um, so once it's simulate, you can just say plot simulated tracks and this is what the tracks will look like. Now, one thing to note here is since there are no updrafts in this region here, that's why you see that eagles are, are, are basically saying there is no updraft, so they're just moving randomly. Uh, but that will not affect presence because uh, because of availability of orographic updrafts here in this region, where most of the eagles are trying to get on this orographic updraft street uh, as much as they can. But the ones that are initiated from like edges here may not be able to uh, get on that street. Um, so if you plot the presence map here, that will look like this. So you can see a lot of, lot of presence uh, at that time in 2012, uh, if, if an eagle is traveling from north, uh, uh, yeah, from north to south. Then you can, okay, I wanna focus on certain power plants and see how the presence looked like. So you can get the turbine, uh, the project names here, and then copy it, and then put it in, the, in this plot wind plant presence map. Um, that will get you the presence densities for individual turbines. Uh, and that's what we mean when we say turbine scale movement model, because then we can now we can differentiate how the presence looks from one turbine location to another. We can also focus on the Golden Hills. Um, so you can put the name of whatever power plant that, uh, that you see here and get its presence. Um, so you can see here for Golden Hills, the turbines on the Eastern side are probably in more uh, conflict with, with the Golden Hill routes uh, for this condition. Um, I just wanna pause and uh, check on time because I have one more case in the Appalachian region that I wanna show. Um, how, are you, how are we doing on time? Yeah, I'd say we're good. If you want to just kind of clip through it. Okay. We have time. Awesome. So then we move to another region. So all you got to do is go to the U.S. wind turbine database, focus on the, re uh, go to the region that you want to focus on. So you see a lot of turbines here. Um, uh, you can just focus and put your cursor where you want to uh, on the southwestern uh, point of the region here want to run this model on, get the lat lungs from here, uh, put it in into the into the southwest long line parameter, specify the width and uh, width of the region. So 60 by 60 kilometers, I want to run it in uniform mode. 
that means I got to specify the wind speed and direction uh, and the direction of eagle movements and the number of eagles I want to simulate. So I usually keep it at 500 or 1,000. If you go over 1,000, you'll probably see a, that you're not getting any difference in presence. Uh, there's not much sampling variability there. So, um, But then it also depends on your resolution and your domain uh, size. So here I specified that, that rectangular box from which I randomly want to start, start the simulated ego. So I initiate this. So again, I'm using my previous configuration and I'm just replacing the parameters I want replaced. Um, so I, I can check these parameters if they make sense, whether the change has been made. Then I initiated the simulator. Um, it will go out, uh, get the um, elevation data, slope data, aspect data, wind turbine locations, everything. And it will compute the updrafts. Let's plot the terrain. Um, so this is the terrain, how it looks like in that region and Appalachian um, region. And you can see these ridges, uh, north, south ridge lines. Um, I can print the details of these turbines. Um, so there's 308 turbines as of, as of uh, uh, most recently. And um, you can see the year, the, the power plant was constructed, how many turbines, hub height, rotor diameter. You can see the new, uh, there's a hub. Um, Fairwind project has, has a hub height of 100 meters and a rotor diameter of 100 meters. So you can get all, all the details here. Um, we can plot the updrafts. So you'll see that where the ridge lines are, the updrafts are highest because the because the updraft model that we have is based on slope aspect and the wind speed and direction. So that makes sense. Um, let me simulate the tracks. This flag here that you see will be used to save the files. So if you need to go back and, and, and get the data, not just the figures, but the data, it will be all there in that output directory that we set up initially. And it will be labeled or named with this flag. So you can check that its um, speed is uh, five meters per second. This is the direction. Uh, you know, This is the threshold. This is the model and so forth. So, it will be unique for each simulation. Um, then we can plot the simulator tracks. So here you see that the, the simulator eagles are trying to catch the ridge lines. Probably, that makes sense because uh, that's where the orographic updrafts are highest and usable. And this blue region is, is, is the rectangular region that we set up that we want to simulate the tracks from randomly select from within this rectangular region. Um, we can plot the presence map. So presence map uses this, these tracks and smoothen things out um, using, a, using a circular kernel. Um, so you can see the presence here is very correlated with the turbine locations except this power plant here. So let's see the turbine scale presence. So I get the project names, then I can copy this and put it in, in the plot wind plant presence map function, so I'm, I want to focus on the net power mount storm phase one wind power plant. This is what the presence looks like in terms of turbine locations. You can see a strong uh, presence. And this, this wind power plant is, is, is designed on the ridge line. So that's why uh, for these wind conditions and this, um, while the eagles are trying to go north, this is very conflict between the turbines and the presence here. Uh, let's focus on the other guy, other one, the New Creek Wind. Uh, you see there is no presence here, and we, we noticed that here, this power one is basically. Um, so, the, so I think what's happening is that there are more usable updrafts along this ridge line than the ridge line that this power plant is um, constructed on. Um, and that's what is forcing or uh, enabling the uh, the movement of uh, similar eagles to follow this ridge line and not this one. Um, yeah, so uh, that's it. There's one more test where we're changing the direction. So now as everything stays the same as, as I just showed you, but now the eagles are trying to go south, not north. Um, 
from the northern boundary. So I, I start the configuration, I initiate the simulator that will make sure to get the uh, terrain features and the uh, turbine locations and compute the uptracks. Then I'm going to simulate the tracks and plot the updrafts, uh, see how they look. Um, this simulation is going on in parallel, so it's using eight cores. You can specify 16 or 32, depending on your system. Um, so this is updrafts. And so here we see that the eagles are not trying to follow the ridge lines. Um, so this is quite interesting. So again, the point is that it's not the updraft field. Uh, it's the it's the where the eagle is and where it's trying to go that matters. Um, you can get the presence map here. Um, and then you can focus on um, specific wind turbines. So in this scenario, there's probably no conflict between uh, both eagles and, and, the, and the turbines. We can look at the turbine scale presence as well. Um, so you can see there's no presence here. So that's uh, that's the end of this demo. Uh, feel free to change parameters here uh, and run it yourself. And uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Um, over to you, Elliot.